Are we live? Yes, hi, good afternoon. Welcome to Little Steps Facebook Live. Just a few friendly reminders before we get started. Now we are live twice a month. We're gonna take a little summer break though, so we're gonna be back live in late August, early September. If you wanna be reminded of our live sessions, just go to our Facebook Live events calendar and click the ones that you're interested in. Now, of course, don't forget to subscribe to all our weekly newsletters across major cities in Southeast Asia. The link will be in the subscription. Just click the link and you'll be subscribed. Now, we are live today, so feel free to ask any questions that we can answer to you here live in the live session. And if you do miss the session, you can ask questions anyway and we will get back to you afterwards. Now, let's get started with today's topic. Today's topic is a very interesting one. We are talking about adoption in Hong Kong and today we are we are joined by uh, Mother's Choice, a local charity here that helps children without families as well as pregnant teenagers. Now, as part of their program is to provide a better life for these children and to provide a better life for these children through adoption. So if you're looking to adopt, foster, or help in any way, please stay tuned today because we will be answering all your burning questions. So we're very happy to welcome Aliyah Al Air, sorry and the CEO of Mother's Choice since 2012. Prior to that, she was a, worked as a corporate lawyer here in Hong Kong. She is a native of Hong Kong, has six brothers and sisters who are all volunteers who are helping out at Mother's, at mo at Mother's Choice. And she, she also has five children. Well, very welcome, happy to have you here. So can you tell us a little bit more about yourself, please? Yeah, sure, well, as you can probably tell um, from the size of my family, I'm really, <laughs> passionate about family and that's actually what drew me to working at Mother's okay. Choice and what convinced me to leave the corporate world behind. I started my uh, corporate legal career in New mm -hmm. York City doing M&A in corporate finance and then um, moved back home to Hong Kong mm -hmm. when I was a newlywed and if you had told me then that I would be working at Mother's Choice as a CEO, I never would have believed you. I can imagine from lawyer yes. to here. It's a great So great it's change. been a huge adjustment for my family, as you can imagine, not only is it a big change in salary, uh, but it's a big change in lifestyle for mm -hmm. us. But the reason why I made that radical change for us after a lot of thought is I had, um, I think everybody has one or two light bulb moments in their life where they are faced with a big fork in the road yeah. and they really are confronted with what's my purpose in life? Why yes. am I here? Yes. Um, what is it that I wanna do? And I had one of those moments mm -hmm. when uh, I was uh, downtown near my office, I was sitting in a coffee shop and I had been volunteering for Mother's Choice for many years. My mm -hmm. parents are two of the four co-founders here. And I was really passionate about the work that we do which is really about seeing every child in a loving family. And knowing from my own life experience that having a family that sees you and loves you and believes in your potential can change, change everything. everything. Yes, couldn't agree more. And I remember sitting in this coffee shop about to go back up into my office and looking through the South China Morning Post, which is our local English speaking newspaper, mm -hmm. and uh, noticing in the classified section the advertisement for the role of CEO at Mother's Choice. Now I knew that they were searching, uh, it didn't even cross my mind to apply, but I read this uh, I read this advertisement as I was about to go to work and I just, it, just it was like a light bulb went off and I just thought this, this is what I wanna do with the rest of my life. Now mind you, it didn't happen overnight. I had to convince my husband <laughs> and then uh, convince the board that they should take a chance on a corporate lawyer to come and work in a nonprofit and Actually, that's something I'd have to say. Oftentimes, people are in the corporate sector, and maybe they haven't been working for a mm -hmm. while, or they're doing something totally different yeah. um, than community service, and they think, what do I have to offer? Yes. I actually passionately believe that no matter how much money you have, no matter how old you are, no matter how much time you have or what your background is, that there's something that everybody has to offer that can make a difference in their community. And so, yeah, I decided to fight for the role, and it's been seven years seven now. Seven years. And, you know, it hasn't been easy, um, but it has been totally life-changing for me, and I'm so grateful and to be here. You've got six brothers and sisters. Can I just ask how many brothers, how many sisters? Yeah, Older, younger? Four girls and three boys, and I'm the oldest. Wow. Yeah. Okay, and so you're bearing all the responsibility. Yeah, all yeah and I mean, quite a few of us are lawyers, so we have very intense dinner table discussions, but it does mean I get a lot of pro bono legal assistance. Some other choice would be very important, too. Awesome, awesome. Now, for those who don't know, can you just 
quickly go through what the actual goal is of Mother's Choice and what, what are they trying to uh, do for Hong Kong yeah. and people here? Well, I'm so glad that you asked that. I think uh, there's something whether people live in Hong Kong mm -hmm. or they're living here in the region, actually thinking about a charity that helps babies and children that don't have families or pregnant teenagers, it almost seems it almost seems really unusual to think about that Absolutely. even being in need in yeah. the city of Hong Kong. Uh, but the fact is, even though Hong Kong is affluent and beautiful and modern, people think of our glittering skyline, it's hard to believe that a charity like Mother's Choice is needed, but actually uh, the needs in our city are just desperate. One in five children in Hong Kong lives in poverty, and um, there's a real uh, challenge for young people increasing social isolation, uh, children who are being abandoned, abused, and neglected, thousands of children that are in full-time residential care with hundreds on any given day waiting to get mm -hmm. in and it creates a real problem with young people of that course. don't have families yes. and has impact on every aspect of society. So the fact is uh, 32 years uh, into our work actually uh, Hong Kong needs Mother's Choice more than ever but we're so grateful to really join hands with the community. You know we're a really volunteer-driven organization. 80% of yeah. our team are volunteers. We work with hundreds of volunteers every week. Um, that we really believe that it's possible for our local community to engage in these community problems and we can uh, have hope for the city of Hong Kong. Fantastic. Well, I'm glad such a charity as yours exists yeah. for here in Hong Kong. Now, as usual, we will be splitting up the uh, topic or the chat into three topics. Mm -hmm. The first one will be adoption procedure in Hong Kong. The second will be focusing on Mother's Choice and its youth program. And thirdly will be how can people get involved? As you heard, we've got 80% is all volunteers. So if you want to get involved, please tune in the last bit. So let's get started. So adoption procedure in Hong Kong. Now can you tell us about the requirements that are needed in order to adopt in Hong Kong? Yeah, sure. Well, maybe first of all, I'll just start with saying, you know, adoption is a really special and unique way to build a family. Adoption is for life, mm -hmm. and adoption uh, can change everything for our family. And it's something that we uh, really celebrate, but we also take really seriously. And so, um, just you know how adoption works mm -hmm. in Hong Kong, um, the requirements are you do uh, need to be 25 years old, okay. uh, have stable relationships, be, have good physical and mental health, and obviously uh, the means to be able to care for a child in your home. But the most important criteria or requirement is, is really the commitment and desire to uh, be a parent and make a permanent commitment to a child for their whole life. And just a question, is it possible for a single parent to adopt or does it usually require two parents here in Hong Kong? Mm -hmm. uh, both single parents and married couples Fantastic. can apply for adoption, mm -hmm. uh, although uh, oftentimes uh, the government who does all the matching yeah. will give preference to uh, married couples, but that doesn't mean that single parents can't adopt. Fantastic. And we help both single parents good, and good. married couples in that process. All right, and then the second question, what is the typical procedure time? How long does it usually take, let's say, mm -hmm. if I would want to adopt? Mm -hmm. and I would go to Mother's Choice. Mm -hmm. What would be the next steps, and how long would it usually take for me in order to adopt a child? Mm -hmm. Well, there is a process that you'll have to go through, including um, uh, going to some trainings and briefings mm -hmm. to really understand not only how the system works, but to make sure that you have a full understanding of what adoption of means. Uh, there's an application process, and part of that application process is not just asking you about your background and your ability to uh, financially provide for a child, but really um, understanding if you have community support, uh, friends and family around you who will support you in your journey, um, and uh, also do you uh, uh, checking your health, but also doing some criminal background checks to mm -hmm. make sure that your, your home is suitable Absolutely. and safe for yes. a child. Uh, and then uh, finally, you know, one of the things that we try to do is really build community for pr prospective adoptive parents and really connect them to others who are also either seeking to adopt or who have already adopted so that uh, we always say it takes a village to raise a child and nobody can do it by themselves and so we really want to help create that community for adoptive parents and prospective adoptive parents here in Hong Kong. And how is the procedure like, is it, is it difficult for non-Chinese speaking people, is it just as, yeah. is it 
quite difficult are the procedure plannings also in English or would it be yeah, quite um, the procedures are bilingual in Hong Kong Fantastic. so you can apply both as a Chinese speaker or as an English speaker I think it's important to note that um, the Hong Kong government will give preference uh, for children uh, to parents who speak are the same ethnic background and speak the same language as a child mm -hmm. but if uh, those parents can't be found for them, then they will also allow a child to be adopted by somebody from a different um, ethnic or cultural background because our preference is for children really to be in family. We don't want to see kids spending yeah. their lives in institutional care. And you also don't want to see families taking your child in and then not agreeing and then going back in yeah, and out of really adoption. It needs to be a life needs to be a stable, community. yes, exactly. I think mm -hmm. that's very important. What are the costs usually of such a procedure? Yeah, so you know, mother's choices, if we're a little bit different than mm -hmm. um, perhaps some other jurisdictions, other countries where it's very expensive to it adopt. Can, yes. uh, we, we are a nonprofit organization and we don't run this to um, make any money. So um, well, we run this as part of our charity, as part of our service to the community because we want to see children in families that are loving, that are safe, and that are permanent for life. So we actually only charge a a Hong Kong $3,000 fee, which wow. is a basic um, kind of administrative fee. And there's, a, there's another fee that's about the same um, to the Hong Kong government just for filing the paperwork. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a small fee you have to pay to the police to get your um, background checks done. But, but it's actually um, not an expensive process. No, quite but it does take commitment and real thought about, um, it's not just uh, your background that you need to share, but you also have to think about um, what um, what are the characteristics of a child that you'd be willing to welcome into your home, what age, what family background, what medical needs, and that's what really determines how long the process takes. So yes. if you're committed to doing your paperwork and walking through the journey, um, it depends on how flexible you are. Of course. Because when children that are waiting for adoption oftentimes have complex uh, family histories, mm -hmm. uh, they may have uh, additional medical or special needs, of and they may may have taken them some time to get to the journey of being freed for adoption, so mm -hmm. they might be older. So the more flexible um, a prospective adoptive parent yeah. is, the, the faster it will be for them to adopt. And I can tell you this, you know, uh, getting to know so many of our kids, they're really, there's no such thing as a child who can't be adopted or who can't I have a family. I couldn't agree more with that. Our children are truly amazing, and I really believe that every child deserves to have a family. And all the children I can imagine also very quite massively in age, mm -hmm. yep. so it would be 16, 12, 8, baby. Yeah, to down, all the way down to baby. Fantastic, good mm -hmm. to know. And for, for a question that I had as well, would you have to be a permanent resident in order to adopt? That's a really great question. Yes. You do not need to be a permanent okay. resident, but you do need to be a resident. Okay. And you need to have resided in Hong Kong for at least one year and have no plans to leave, Fantastic. Um, because if you're planning to leave, we don't know how long the process is going to take. Exactly, so you exactly. need to be here for at least one year. And if you are in a relationship, mm -hmm. um, whether married or otherwise, we look for stability in relationships. So if you're married, they look they they look for you to be to have been married for at least three years. Okay, good to yeah. know. Good. Can you tell us a little bit more about Project Bridge? Yeah. So Project Bridge is something we're really passionate about. It's our kind of innovative um, approach to foster care. Mm -hmm. We had spent some time thinking about what if foster care could really um, not only provide amazing, loving, temporary care for children who are either waiting for adoption or waiting to be returned to their bare birth family who is going through some kind of a crisis. Mm -hmm. What if we could provide amazing care and really see kids not get stuck in the foster care system but really be that bridge to permanency Hence the name I Project that. Bridge, yes. that's where it came from. And so Project Bridge, that's where it, it, the, the idea sprang up and it really uh, brings together committed volunteer families yes. who were willing to provide a, a temporary placement for a child in their home while they're waiting for yes. their forever families and uh, really be that love and support and attachment that a child needs so they don't have to wait I in a hospital yeah, exactly. or in an institution. Which often creates a lot of trauma for a child. Exactly, additional trauma. Tra for additional a child. trauma. Is and very so good point. that you can really make a difference mm -hmm. in a child's life. And actually, that's the, that's one category of volunteering at Mother's I was just going to say, who can volunteer? We're really passionate about and 
In fact, it's been so life-changing for all of us, not only starting Project Bridge, but um, seeing how kids' lives can be transformed when they spend, you know, uh, from anywhere from a few months to a year in your home, how it can not only change your life, but how it can change you and your family's life. Um, in fact, um, my husband and my kids and I were also Project Bridge family. Um, you know, it's changed our life mm -hmm. to host another child in our home. Mm -hmm. And in fact, almost all of our senior staff have also been Project Bridge parents. It's changed our lives too, so. Can you tell us what the criteria is to be a volunteer for Project Bridge, mm -hmm. exactly? Yeah, uh, it's not that dissimilar from applying for adoption okay. in that we need you to go through some background checks mm -hmm. and we need you um, to just make sure you're uh, physically and mentally well, um, that you are safe and um, we also do a lot of training because yes. it can be can daunting be. and intimidating. Of course. Could I welcome a child into my heart and into my home? And Will it be hard for me to, to say, say goodbye? goodbye. Yes. It is a that's unlike a adoption, which is forever. I you think know, that would fostering through Project Bridge is that's a short term mm -hmm. thing and so really preparing um, how do I say goodbye and knowing that giving that child the opportunity to attach to you and even in it being painful to say goodbye, it means you've really done the right thing. And you've it done means a good that he or she is going to a better home. Exactly. exactly. And so really training and, it's and never prepare. goodbye. Really. Exactly. It's so we goodbye. train and prepare families for that. Uh, we also go into their home and do a home assessment yeah. to make sure that their home is safe, that the people that live in their home are safe. Um, but I'd say this, if you have a heart for it, I'm pretty sure you can do it. We we run information sessions, uh, you know, every couple of months That's here. Great. And it's something that if you're thinking about it, I'd urge people to come along because it truly is life-changing. Awesome. And how long does it usually last for? So a pro so let's say if you foster a child in Project Bridge, mm -hmm. would that take three months, six months, a year, two years? Yeah. It varies. Yeah, it really varies okay. depending on that child's situation. Mm -hmm. But I always tell people to be at least mentally or emotionally prepared for six months to a year. Perfect. Although it could be less than that. Or it could, could be, be longer. slightly over the yeah. that. Yeah. Fantastic. Great. Yeah. So for those who are just joined us, we are doing a Facebook Live today with Mother's Choice regarding adoption in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. We're, we've just finished the topic on uh, adoption procedure in Hong Kong. If you've missed that, you can always go mm -hmm. back to our live mm -hmm. event later on YouTube. Now we are discussing Mother's Choice Youth Program. Mm -hmm. So what can you tell us about the youth program? Yeah, yes. so Mother's Choice doesn't just take care of babies and children that don't have families. Um, we're also really passionate about being there uh, for youth, very young people who are experiencing a crisis pregnancy or who are vulnerable to experience a crisis pregnancy. Yeah. And what most people don't know is that's actually the heart of Mother's Choice. That's why we got started. When Mother's Choice, um, when Mother's Choice was launched, the heart was to be there that's for I the mean, yeah. hundreds of young girls every weekend who were experiencing a crisis pregnancy mm -hmm. in our city. Um, most of whom are... We have a question coming. Oh, uh, great. Thank you. Well, please finish what you said, and then I'll, I'll, I'll yeah, ask this question. Sure. So our founders started Mother's Choice just realizing that every weekend there were hundreds of young girls yeah. in Hong Kong experiencing a crisis pregnancy who were going over the border uh, to Shenzhen for unsafe um, terminations. Yes. And what was really painful for them was realizing that most of the girls were already in their eighth and ninth month of pregnancy, Ooh. and the average age of the girls was 14 and a half. Wow, I, that shocks yeah. me, yes. Yeah, so our heart is really to be there for very young girls oh, who are experiencing a yeah. crisis pregnancy. And cr a crisis pregnancy for us is not just being unplanned, but being unsupported. And so, that's when it's really a crisis. Yes. And um, so most of our, we, we really focus on ages 12 to 25, but actually most of our clients are under the age of 18. Mm -hmm. and, and usually um, the pregnancy for them is really a symptom of much bigger challenges that they're facing in their life. I mean, I'll say this though about teen pregnancy, is teen pregnancy is not just for poor people. And no. It's not just for, actually it's something that's experienced across all socioeconomic, all um, ethnic board, backgrounds, yes. it's across the board, but we're really focused on very young girls who are experiencing other trauma in their lives. Mm -hmm. And what we want to be, our heart, our mission, in working with young people is really providing a safe place um, where they can be embraced and oftentimes they're not in a safe home in themselves yes. where they can be embraced and then equipped and empowered for where a hopeful future. they can feel future. safe. Yes. Yeah, and we want to see their whole lives turned around Fantastic. so that they can have a good future. Exactly. Yeah. Question. Yes. So, who is this from? From 
Marta, I believe. So question for Marta, if a family isn't sure mm -hmm. if they can commit to an adoption of a child and want to know first if they would be good adoptive parents, is there a fa family option as a first step? I guess we just d discussed that, which would be Project Bridge. Yeah, sure. I think I think uh, learning more about foster care and experiencing foster care is a great first step. Um, now, mind you, I just need to clarify in Hong Kong, there's no such thing as foster to adopt. So mm. you can't foster and then adopt. plan to adopt that same child. But if you would like to foster just to see how it goes I for your family, and then later on, think about applying for adoption, that's definitely a great plan. Fantastic. Well, thank you for your question. Keep your questions coming. So, <coughs> would you say that teen pregnancy, sexual education, and contraception is somewhat of a taboo in Hong Kong? There seems to be a calling for your charity, yeah. and as we said before, mm -hmm. perhaps as, as happy as we are that you exist, perhaps it should be a more governmental thing to address such problems rather than charities yeah. alone, of course. Yeah, so, do I, you think this is a real taboo in Hong Kong? It is. and. Uh, I, I totally agree with you. I think it's something that we need to see shift in our culture. Um, and I, it's been really great to see. I know last year's policy address, I know that the government talked about yes. um, thinking about comprehensive sexuality education as mandatory in local schools. And actually, that's something that we do. We provide um, not just sexuality education so that uh, young people can understand their bodies, um, but really talking about relationships and values because. The key thing for us is so many of um, our girls who come to us have been, uh, who have experienced real trauma in their lives, both abuse and assault, mm -hmm. um, really unsafe, um, dangerous yeah. relationships. And really addressing that is important. But I would say, even though I'm passionate about school sexuality education, I really think this is something that we as a community need to ask ourselves as individuals. Mm -hmm. Because if we're waiting for schools to do it, it's really too late. <laughs> Absolutely. We're waiting for the government to do it. It's too late. This is something I'd really like to see families equipped to talk to their young people and not waiting till they're teenagers. Quite frankly, um, obviously in an age-appropriate way, this is really a child protection issue and how can we protect our children um, from abuse, abandonment, neglect, and, and really being uh, vulnerable. And so equipping uh, parents and equipping, uh, parents equipping their children is really, is really important. Do you have such workshops here for children, if I may ask, to? Yeah. Uh, child protection is really yeah. key for us, and yes. so that's something that we actually train all of our staff and volunteers on child Great. protection. Yeah. And it's something that we share with others, too. In fact, we worked with um, HKU to um, produce a pretty amazing uh, legal manual to equip, it's not just lawyers, uh, that need to know about child protection. It's actually anybody who's working anybody, with no, children. I agree, yes. And so we have been creating tools for social workers, for teachers, for others who work directly on the front line, especially with vulnerable children and youth, to how can you um, know what children's rights are and mm -hmm. how can you really protect them from abuse. Of course, of yeah. course. Now this, this youth program I see mm -hmm. includes comprehensive, comprehensive sex education mm -hmm. workshops. Do you've just discussed, do we have, what did, just answer that question, yes. didn't we? Yes, I just realized. Mm -hmm. So we're moving on then. So for the ones who've just joined us, we are talking today about adoption in Hong Kong. We're already going into our last topic. Mm -hmm. How can people get involved? Probably one of the most important, since eight, well, one of the more important ones. So volunteering, how big is it for the ones who haven't joined, who have just joined our session? You said 80%. Yeah, we're That's an amazing. 80% volunteer organization, and honestly, I love to see that grow. I know, I think and it's fantastic. I've never heard 80%. Yeah, it's so we, really we work with, I think it's over 700 regular volunteers wow. on a weekly basis. Okay, fantastic. That's not even talking about specific events where we bring in more. Amazing. But I'll tell you this, just going, tie back to yes. the last section as we talked about sexuality education yeah. as well as our child protection training. Mother's Choice is really unique because we don't just um, provide crisis intervention to a child or young person or family that's in crisis. Mm -hmm. We're also actively engaged in prevention. And that's because our vision of every child in a loving family is really a picture of a transformed city, of a changed culture, where we value children differently, where we think about uh, the value of young women, yes. uh, how we define family 
differently. And at the end of the day, that vision is not going to become a reality until we see our whole community mobilized um, into playing their role. And there is a role for everybody to play. And that's why volunteer engagement is so critical for us. We really want to be that catalyst, not that we can uh, be there for every child or every young person or every family in the whole city, but how can we really- Trigger change. Yeah, how yes. can we be that catalyst? Absolutely. How can we be that spark in the city? And part of that for us is really engaging the community to be the solution for these really significant problems that we see in the community here in Hong Kong. And so uh, volunteers are really important to us. And we actually have volunteers who do every kind of role in Mother's Choice from admin and finance to helping us um, care for babies mm -hmm. to hosting children in their homes to mentoring our girls. And I'd say this, you know, I think there's a, you know, oftentimes people don't know really what the challenges are that we face at Mother's Choice. And that's part of it's because we don't have a huge staff team. We yeah. are really reliant on volunteers they and yes organization, so <laughs> yeah, I and so people think we don't need volunteers <laughs> and actually we have a desperate need yes in fact right now I have a big push for something we like to a little bit jokingly call a new kind of happy hour great so our biggest struggle is finding people who can help us take care of our babies mm -hmm. uh, between 5 and 7 p.m. okay great it's really hard to and find people who can come and volunteer at that time so I just say, you know, I've, I've, I'm at least short of 100 volunteers. So if you want to come instead of going out to the bar, I mean, just one, come <laughs> and have a new kind of happy hour. Um, come along to one of our volunteer orientation sessions. Okay. We actually do have a pretty extensive training pro Can process. Can you tell us a little bit more about your orientation program? Like what days? How do people know? But do we go to your website? Yeah, we... yeah. So just go to our website, yeah. which is www.motherschoice.org. Mm -hmm. And we run, uh, every month we're running uh, volunteer orientation sessions. We do them alternately in Chinese and in English. Okay. And you can come along and learn about the whole universe of different ways to volunteer. So uh, from uh, hosting a child in your home to being a graphic designer or a translator to coming, coming and helping take care of a child. Um, you can indicate what your interest is and then depending on what you're interested in, we'll reach out to you, you can come along and then if you end up coming for a new kind of happy hour, mm -hmm. um, there's a process that you'll go through um, plus training um, to really learn how to do it and to make sure that we're keeping our children safe. Fantastic. And what are the age requirements? Are you only accepting adults for when it comes to charity work? Yeah, that's a great question. <laughs> and I say that as somebody who is a youth volunteer at Mother's Choice. So. Yeah, no, I understand because <laughs> especially when you're working with children, it would be advisable to yes, be so above age. So working with our kids to be what we call in, in a child care system yeah. role, um, you do need to be 18. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that um, kids and young people don't have a role to play. Okay. And Actually, we have volunteers of all different ages at Mother's Choice, and one uh, one way for younger people to get involved that I'm really excited about, we have partners with several different schools here mm -hmm. in Hong Kong, both um, Chinese-speaking and English-speaking schools called the Youth Leadership Council. Awesome. And so if you have a student who's out of school who doesn't have a Wild Seed chapter, please reach out to us because we're Absolutely. passionate about yeah. empowering and equipping young people to be a voice uh, for other kids and young, young people in the city. Mm -hmm. And they work on all kinds of stuff for us. It's not just, um, you know, it's actually meaningful work. Absolutely. So oh. from raising awareness to raising funds to working on strategic challenges, like how do we raise awareness of adoption? Uh, how do we raise awareness of child protection in the city? So there's a lot that young people can do. Age does not disqualify Great. you. Great. Yeah. And for the ones who don't have time to volunteer, how can we donate? I'm so glad you asked that question. <laughs> As a mostly volunteer organization, I think we've never really gone out there to tell people what our needs are. Mm. And um, Mother's Choice is actually not a well-funded organization. We don't have a big endowment, and we've been able to, you know, every year we're raising money at our gala dinner and a couple of other fundraising events really just to keep our doors open for that so year, busy. just to raise our budget. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and I just think we've been able to have such a big impact for hundreds of thousands of people over the last 32 years, mm -hmm. really because of our volunteers. But we would like to grow. There is so much more that we can be doing. And having sustainable um, giving uh, really makes a difference, especially because I think it's only 24% of our funding comes from government and other government-like sources. So it, even $100 a month through our monthly giving program 
would make a huge difference for us. So really, every little bit counts in Mother Choice. And we can find that on your website. Absolutely. Same, same way as we find volunteers. Absolutely. Right. Click on Donate, and you can see all Perfect. the different ways to get involved. Because I think a lot of people would like to help and only think that volunteering is the only option, but yeah. donate, and if you don't have the time, donation is just as equally yeah. as good. Yeah, absolutely. What do you hope for the future for Mother Care? What yeah. would you want to see in the next five years? Yeah, I, I would really love to see more families step up and be willing to welcome a child who's in need of a temporary home into their own home and park. There are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of kids on a wait list on any given day. I was just talking to my team and learning there's a hundred new kids that get referred for residential oh. care every month in Hong Kong. Every month? A hundred new ones wow. every month. It's so the needs, are just, wow. the needs are just desperate. Yeah. And so I would really, my dream is that we could really just reverse that wait list, that we of would course. have more families willing to open their own, even if they don't want to do foster care through our project bridge. Yeah. There's many other agencies they can approach. It doesn't have to just be Mother's Choice. But I, it just makes me, it breaks my heart to see of so many course, kids yes. waiting for family in our city. And that's my dream, that we could really mobilize the city. Yes. And I believe that people of Hong Kong, people who live here are so generous, they're kind. It's just how can we help facilitate that Absolutely. so we can re really be there for our next generation of children in the city. Fantastic. Thank you so much for your chat today. Thank you. It was a great interview. Thank you for all the ones who were watching today. Now this is going to be live, or it's going to be filmed on YouTube. So if you haven't seen our live interview, you can always check back again and ask any questions. Now please go to Mother's Choice. Can you say your website one more time? Yeah, our website is www.motherschoice.org. And I look forward to hearing from you. Perfect. Now thank you very much, and we'll see you soon. Bye.